My name is Russell Costanza. I started farming full-time in 1981. I was previously in civil engineering. Uh, I went back to work on a farm to earn some extra income. And uh, we started, I actually started with one acre and I would peddle it uh, to local grocery stores and I grew from there. Now, uh, we're a four and a half to five and a half million dollar a year business. Uh, my son, daughter and son-in-law are deeply involved in this. We're in a tra transition to uh, uh, family succession plan. Uh, Adam uh, from MSU is helping us with that. And uh, we grow tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, a variety of hot peppers. Uh, with the H2A program, we're going back into zucchini squash and yellow squash. Uh, we have cut uh, our winter, we don't no longer do winter squash, we no longer do pumpkins. Um, and there's some other crops at the moment I can't think of that, you know. So we have cut back uh, because of shortage of farm workers. There's plenty of farm jobs, we have plenty of those, but we need uh, uh, willing and able, qualified farm workers to get this job done. Who makes up your workforce? We have uh, a diminishing returning domestic workforce that works in, uh, the, in, in Florida. Uh, most of them are in the Plant City area. They harvest strawberries in the winter, plant strawberries in the fall. Uh, some pick oranges, uh, but that workforce is diminishing rapidly. Uh, they're moving on to other jobs. Uh, the farm worker work ethic is superior to most all other jobs. Uh, it is work. It's not a job. It's work. It's farm work. So uh, we're losing those. Uh, we've had kids here go on to college get their degrees. Uh, one of them from a local farm here is the assessor in a major county in Florida. Uh, he's big time. Uh, one kid that worked here was in the uh, governor's office in Texas. And uh, so these kids have gone on, got their education and moved up the uh, economic ladder. So we lose them there. And uh, I have kids that work for me that in agribusiness, doing very well, very proud of that. Started here, learned how to work. And, uh, and and they move on. That's what we want. So uh, it, the problem is, it's hard to find people who will are willing to work when we need to. Sometimes seven days a week. And uh, a lot of these crops is too early yesterday, too late tomorrow. So they have to be harvested timely. Otherwise, their quality and value drop drastically. How is that labor shortage affected you for 2016? Hopefully, uh, we have gotten uh, some of our H2 workers in. Uh, we have a returning workforce. We're going to get probably 80, 90 percent of them back. Uh, probably 10, 15 will not return. So that that force is is uh, diminishing, and so uh, right now we're adequate. What else? Could you be growing if you had more workers, or how much more could the family business expand? All we want to do. I mean, we have, I have requests to grow other products to expand what we do grow. Um, more squash, uh, round tomatoes instead of romas. We do the romas. We're going to ask them to grow round tomatoes, but we can't get it done. We don't have the workforce. We uh, supervision is another problem. Finding people qualified to be supervisors is an issue, but mainly just farm workers. And They're stoop labor. Any kind of comments to wrap up? What needs to be done, or kind of where you hope to see this go? We need to take the politics out of the issue. Farm uh, labor is in agriculture is unique. Uh, we made our history. We made our points on the issue. Traditionally, uh, we have been, you know, agriculture across the country was in the Bracero program during World War II. Uh, they followed up with a special ag worker uh, in the Immigration Act of 86. Uh, that sunset, now we're left with the H-2A program. Uh, we have become very educated about the rules and regulations of immigration. The H-2A program is a legal U.S. Uh, farm guest worker program enacted by Congress, signed by the, into law by the president, and it's a legal program and it needs to be, you know, public needs to know that's what it is. And we would welcome to have all domestic workers. I wouldn't have to spend, you know, I got a million dollars invested in housing. I wouldn't need to do that.
and the cost of the uh, the program is very expensive. Uh, we have to pay wages dictated by the federal government and Department of Labor, and enforced by them, and it's 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 harshly enforced. So record keeping is is uh, complicated, cumbersome, and any minute variation of not following the law and regulation will end up in a lawsuit, and we're going to pay. And any last comments? Um, we have some members of Congress and the Senate who are working with agriculture. Uh, I'd like to identify Diane Feinstein from California, huge supporter of, of the farm worker movement and farm, farmers and farm workers. Uh, Fred Upton, uh, he's our local congressman. He's always worked with us. Um, so there's uh, members on both sides of the, of the aisle who understand the problem, but like I said before, hurting Congress is much harder than hurting cats. For Brownfield TV, I'm Nicole Heslop reporting.